ace in the hole. It's a very narrow use case without any offerings. Every single map in this game will only spawn three chests on it. You can burn a coin that will increase the amount of chests that spawn on the map, but also the killer can burn a coin to reduce the number of chests on the map. It's one of those luck based perks, honestly, and I really don't like perks that revolve around luck. You can pair it with Blunders, which would be the ideal situation. You could find chests around the map a bit easier, but by itself, Ace in the Hole just doesn't seem that useful to me. It's also, like I said, it's, it's a luck-based perk. I don't really like perks that revolve around RNG. Next is Adrenaline, and I do like Adrenaline. It's a very popular meta perk, especially if you enjoy being chased by the killer. You can get a lot of value out of it. Now, the issue is that you do have to make it to the final gen. You have to pop the final gen for this to do anything for you. But the nice thing is that you can sort of ignore being injured if you have this perk. It can save you time because you don't have to heal. You have to make it to endgame. You're basically playing the entire match with only three perks until the last gen pops. So that is the trade-off. Very strong, but you don't have a fourth perk. Aftercare. This perk allows you to see a survivor's aura at any distance after you perform a cooperative action, rescue them from a hook, or complete a healing action on them. You can see their aura at any distance. It's a very nice situational awareness perk. The only problem with it is that it goes away when you get hooked. You are probably going to get hooked during your match, okay? And honestly, it's... It's kind of recommended that you get hooked at least once or twice. You do want to share the hooks with your teammates so, so none of them die. So that's kind of the idea. You spread out the hooks so one survivor doesn't immediately get hooked three times. And unfortunately, after care's effects, they go away when you get hooked. So it's not really ideal, but it is a strong effect because both your teammates can see your aura and you can see their auras, but it's probably not optimal. I'm just saying that right now. It's probably not the best perk to play optimally. Alert. I do like this perk. It's a perk that I use quite often, and the reason is that a lot of killers do break pallets, and they break walls, and they break generators too. And there's a lot of killer perks. Killers will be incentivized to break generators, for example, when they have Pop Goes the Weasel, when they have nowhere to hide. When you're looping the killer, they break the pallet, you can see their aura, so you kind of have an advantage during the mind games. It's a very simple perk. They break something, you can see their aura. So yeah, I would recommend it. Any means necessary, it helps you conserve your limited resources, which are pallets. The issue is getting to those pallets that are dropped, that's going to take some time. Because, like, if a pallet gets dropped and you don't have this perk, you just ignore it and you just keep you know, doing your gen or cleansing your totem or, or doing something else that's productive. But with this perk, you're going to be spending extra time navigating to those pallets. And also you have to spend four seconds to reset the drop pallet. So it's just an extra time waster for you. It's not super optimal, but at the same time, if you have nothing better to do and there's a drop pallet, then, you know, that's a, that's a big benefit. You can reset the pallet for yourself. It also provides some situational awareness because you can see drop pallets. Like when a pallet gets dropped, you'll see its aura. I saw a pallet get dropped there and then it disappeared. So the healer broke that pallet. So it's it's good for both situational awareness and there is the practical benefit of resetting the pallet if you happen to be in the area. Also, Didact. It starts you off with a penalty to your healing progress. For every skill check you nail, you get a big chunk of healing that gets added to your bar. The issue with this perk is that skill checks are random. I've had moments where I'll be healing a survivor and I won't get a single skill check. So basically I'll just be healing them 25% slower because I have this perk. It's one of those luck based perks and I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've said this but I hate luck based perks. I just want something that does something beneficial for me there's no trade-off. It's just like, it just works, okay? And autodidact is luck-based. You have to actively seek out injured survivors and heal them. And you'll probably have to run a secondary perk like empathy or something to get the max value out of this. 
There are some killers like Legion or killers that bring like Sloppy Butcher that Autodidact can really shine against. But like I said, it's luck based if you run into those killers. It's luck based if you get those skill checks. It takes a while to build up those tokens. So I'm not a fan of this perk. Okay, Babysitter. Now, I mean, obviously these are very nice benefits to have when you're the person being unhooked. You know, you won't leave scratch marks or pools of blood. So you can get away a bit easier from killers who might be tunneling you, but they're not always going to tunnel you. And oftentimes when your teammates unhook you, the killer is not around. Like why would a survivor unhook you when the killer's nearby? They're going to wait for the killer to go away. Teammate probably doesn't need it. You don't really need it. I would say there's better perks to be equipped. Okay, background player. When the killer picks up another survivor, you have a 10 second window to activate a huge sprint boost that lasts five seconds and lets you run at 200% of your normal speed. So you're gonna be moving very fast. The logic behind this perk is that it allows you to get into position for sabotage or flashlight saves or pallet saves. And it does that very well. It's a very nice perk to have when you're trying to get a save for a teammate. But the issue is that it doesn't help you when you're in a chase. It's basically an altruistic perk, okay? And you have to pair it with an item. You have to bring like flashlight, you have to bring a toolbox to sabotage, or you have to bring like saboteur by itself. It's not really a great perk, but if you pair it with flashlight, sabotage, or pallets, then it's very useful. Okay, bounce landing. This is my go-to, my go-to exhaustion perk. And I'll tell you why. Because I am a stealth player and I love perks that help me stay stealthy. It's also very versatile. What it does is when you drop from a height, your survivor will make a sound. They'll like scream when they're falling from a height, which makes it very easy for the killer to find you when you're dropping. But this perk will silence that scream, allowing you to stay stealthy. In addition, the stagger duration is basically nullified. So you can instantly start running the moment you hit the ground and you will start sprinting. There are a lot of maps with two floors to them. Whether you like to play stealthy or you'd like to get into chases, it can help you in either scenario. Better than new, the target survivor gets a 16% speed boost to healing, opening chests, cleansing, and blessing totems. Now, can you tell me what's missing here? The most important action that is not included that is repairing gens, that's right. There is no boost to repairing gens or opening the exit gate. Those are conveniently left out because that would make this perk a little too strong, understandably. But all these other actions are like, eh, they're kind of side actions. They don't really matter that much. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a nice thing to have. But the other thing is that these benefits only get transferred to the survivor you're healing. They do absolutely nothing for yourself. This is a purely altruistic perk. When they get injured, poof, all these bonuses, they go away. I'm not a big fan of it for that reason. Better together, I would say maps with short lines of sight, like the game or Leary's or Hawkins Lab, very useful on those kinds of maps. But for most other maps, it's not that great because survivors can already see where the gens are. And also, if the killer down survivor, you can see the auras of all other survivors, which is kind of nice. You know, you get some situational awareness. But there are other perks that let you see survivor auras basically no matter where they are, like Bond or Empathy or even Kindred. It kind of seems more like a noob-friendly perk. Like, let's say you're, you're queuing with a friend and you just want to you want to find them and do gens together, then obviously this perk is really great for finding your friends. But for for veteran players, you don't really need this perk. You kind of memorize where all the gens are. You have an idea of where the killer is. Probably avoid this perk if you're trying to play optimally. Just pick Bond. Honestly, Bond is just better. Bite the bullet. 
This is also kind of a noob perk. It's like half the benefit of this perk is that if you miss a skill check, nothing bad happens. And if you're a veteran, you're probably not going to be missing skill checks. But the fact that it does silence the grunts of pain for both you and your ally, that can be pretty handy because sometimes you just need to be quiet, otherwise you're gonna die. But most of the time, I don't think it matters that much that you're making grunts of pain because you're probably healing up in a corner or the killer's busy chasing somebody else, and it's not a big deal. Okay, Blast Mine. On the one hand, it can buy you a lot of time, it can save your life sometimes, but on the other hand, the killer can just ignore the gen, not kick it, and uh, nothing happens. But it's kind of cool because it buys you time without you really needing to do anything. You just repair a gen, and then the killer comes along and he's like, oh, I want to kick your gen. And they get stunned, and you it basically buys your entire team. It stuns them for three seconds, and then they have to kick the gen again. They kick the gen once, which takes like one second before they get blinded for three seconds, and then they have to kick the gen again, which takes another additional second. So it basically buys you five seconds worth of time, which is uh, quite a bit in this game. And you can probably activate this perk. Like, let's say you complete a total of two gens. I would say you can activate it three times in most matches. Conservative estimate. I would say two to three, okay? If you put it like that, it will probably buy you 10 to 15 seconds worth of time. It's pretty good for, for not having to really do anything. You're just, you're doing your main objective and you're getting an extra 10 to 15 seconds of course, it can be nullified by things like Lightborn or just the killer ignoring your gen. It can also be nullified by the killer using perks that automatically break the gen for them, like Jolt or Pain Resonance or something like that. It's probably worth taking. It's probably worth taking. Blood Pact. The reason I don't like this perk is because it kind of... Let's break it down. You can see the Obsession's aura at all times. Well, actually, only... Oh, no, no, not at all times. You can only see the Obsession's aura when one of you are injured. It's like, whatever, you can see one survivor's aura while they're injured. And if you're the obsession, then you can't see anybody's aura, so. But um, when you complete a healing action on them, you get haste while you're near them. So, I mean, that sounds strong, but you have to stay within 16 meters of each other. Unless you're within a duo and you're, you're both planning on staying near each other, this is probably not going to, to play out for you. You might stay together for a while, but then you have to do other things. Like maybe you have to go heal yourself, or maybe um, you have to go save somebody from the hook, or maybe you have to split gens, or maybe one of you starts getting chased and you don't want to both be getting chased at the same time because that's a huge waste of time. Unless you're in a duo, this perk just doesn't seem that useful. Okay, Blood Rush. Now, there's a lot of conditions to this perk. It's a very strong perk. It basically allows you to activate your exhaustion perk a second time, even if you're already exhausted. But the issue is that you can only do this once per match, and you can only do this when you're one hook away from death. And you also have to be healthy. You can't be injured. There's so many conditions that you have to meet to activate this perk that it just seems unlikely. I don't see many people using this, honestly. I don't see people like when I play my games and I'm looking at the perks at the end screen, I never see Blood Rush. Why not just bring Adrenaline? It activates automatically, you don't have to worry about being hooked twice. I'd probably say just bring Adrenaline. Boil Over. If you've ever played on the Eerie of Crows map, you'll see some players, they like to run to the second level and they, they wave you over. It's like, here, come down me up here, come down me up here. So then you down them, you pick them up, you see that they have Boil Over, and you probably won't be able to hook them because the only way you can really get down from the second level on that map is to drop. And if you drop, they will instantly get 33% of their wiggle progress, and you very likely won't make it to whatever hook is nearby. There are isolated situations like that where this perk can save your life, but obviously once the killer knows that you're doing that, they're just going to leave you slugged, and you're kind of just going to be sitting up there waiting for somebody to save you. So, I mean, it's just, um, I don't know. It, like, if the killer forgets that you have this perk, then it can be useful, but by itself, I mean, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't recommend this. Like, you don't really want to be down in the first place, okay? You don't want to be getting carried by the killer in the first place. I'd rather pick a perk that prevents me from getting downed, okay? 
All right, Bond. Okay, if you guys watch my videos or watch my, uh, my gameplay, you know I love Bond. And the reason I love Bond is because, especially as a solo queue player, you're going to know what everybody's doing on your team. If you need to know where the gens are, you can find an ally working on a gen. You can find somebody to heal you if you're injured. You can find out where the totems are. Like, let's say an ally is cleansing a totem and you don't know where the killer's totem is. You'll see your ally working on it. Maybe they get interrupted by the killer. Then you can go and pick up the slack. Just knowing if somebody's getting chased, you know where not to go. It's like you're on like an indoor map and you can't really see that far. And the killer's hair radius, it's like booming in your ears. You don't really know where the killer is, but you can see your ally being chased. So you know in what area the killer is in. So you don't go that way. You don't take unnecessary damage. Also, you're trying to figure out whether or not you should be going to save somebody on hook. Bond can tell you who's going for the save. That helps you a lot. It saves you a lot of time. It helps you make better decisions, okay? There's so many situations where it comes in handy that I just cannot recommend it enough. Boon Circle of Healing. Basically, it only takes like 8 to 10 seconds to heal somebody, which is really fast. It also reveals the auras of injured survivors in the totem's range. It's kind of like a less powerful empathy. If you're trying to reset, like if everybody on your team is injured, but there is the issue of, you know, the killer can just snuff your totem. They do have to take time out of their patrol route to do that. I would say more often than not, it's definitely worth it. Okay, Boon Dark Theory, 2% doesn't sound like a lot, but in a chase, sometimes 2% is the difference between making it to a window or a pallet. So it's kind of hard to quantify just how powerful this perk is, because the advantage is pretty minor. You can't really notice it, but it can be very strong against slower killers. Should you bring it? Honestly, I think the other boon perks are probably more important to bring than this. Probably more impactful. Boon Exponential is basically like giving every survivor unbreakable, which is very strong. The only issue is that you have to be within the totem's radius to make use of that uh, unbreakable effect. You do have to be downed, and most of the time you're probably not going to be down. You don't know if the killer's going to slug you. It's, it's a strong perk, it's just like, mm, it depends. You don't know what the killer's going to do. Okay, Shadow Step. Now this is one of my favorite boons because it helps me stay stealthy. I love that. This will remove your scratch marks when you're in the totem's range, and it also hides your aura from the killer. Very powerful, because the devs have added so many aura reveal perks. There's so many things that give away your position, and you'll never know about it unless you run something like Distortion. You'll never know when the killer knows where you are. But with something like Boon Shadow Step, you don't have to worry about any of that. Very nice to have. Now, is there any issues with this perk? If you're injured, then even if your scratch marks are being hidden, it's not going to help you because the killer can just track you by your grunts of pain or your blood. But scratch marks are pretty important for killers to find survivors with. And if you are on a map that has short lines of sight, then this perk can help you get away very easily. Borrowed time. I almost never see anybody run this anymore because, well, you get these effects baseline as a survivor now. Granted, like, borrowed time increases the duration of these effects, which can save your life. I'm sure all of you at some point have been chased by the killer after being unhooked, and they just wait for your effect to expire. Borrowed time will basically ensure that they can't just wait it out. They'll probably be like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna count down from 10 and wait for the borrowed time effect to expire so I can down him and tunnel him. <laughs> but borrowed time will prevent that from happening. It's nice to give the middle finger to tunnelers. Very nice to have, just I don't think it's that necessary. Okay, Botany Knowledge increases your healing speed by 50%. Healing survivors and healing yourself is pretty common in this game. So I do think this is going to buy you a decent chunk of time. But, well, I'm not saying you can't bring a medkit with this. But if you do bring a medkit, like let's say this is all you brought. You brought a medkit and Botany. Because of the healing item efficiency penalty, you wouldn't be able to heal yourself fully with this medkit, which is uh, pretty concerning. You would have to bring like an add-on to complement this. 
If I ever bring botany, I always bring like self-care. These, these two go well together. Botany makes it a bit more bearable. If you have a healing build in mind, you can bring this, like pair this with empathy or something. Okay, breakdown. You can pair this with saboteur or just a sabotage build, and it can help you in some, some niche situations. Like you don't know where the next survivor is going to get downed, but having a, a hook that's already broken can limit the killer's options to where they hook people. The reason I don't like it is because you have to get unhooked and being unhooked means that you got hooked. And <laughs> for me, I like perks that help me prevent being hooked. I don't really want a perk that only activates after I've messed up. So yeah, breakdown, eh, I probably wouldn't use this myself. Okay, breakout. This is very much only a perk you would bring when you have a sabotage build, because otherwise the carry survivor is probably going to get hooked. There's just too many hooks on the map. You have to sabotage one to really get value out of it. The issue with this perk is that it requires you to be within five meters of a killer. And that's very risky. I was streaming and I had breakout and then I chased the killer with this perk. What happened was the killer just spun around because I was chasing after him. He spun around and he downed me. I didn't have enough time to react because I had to be within five meters of him for my ally to get the, uh, the wiggle bonus. I don't really want to have to be chasing the killer to get benefit out of this. It's a time waster for you. During that time, you could have been repairing gens. I'm not going to say it's useless, but it's like the risk just doesn't seem worth the reward, honestly. Okay, buckle up. It both allows you to see the killer's aura after healing somebody from the dying state, and also gives both of you endurance. So it can save two survivors, essentially. Uh, the issue is that you have to heal a downed ally. And how often does that happen? I mean, it might happen like once or twice per match, maybe, but even in those scenarios, the killer might not be anywhere nearby. If you're reviving somebody from the dying state, the killer is not on top of you. Very likely. The killer probably went away somewhere to kick a gen or to chase somebody else, and you won't even need this perk. You won't even need it. I'm not saying it's useless, but I would say it's not necessary. Okay, built to last. The only time I run built to last is if I bring like a green toolbox and a bunch of uh, like these add-ons with it. This will give me a huge number of charges, but there is the issue of having to hide inside a locker for 12 seconds, but sometimes you'd be doing that anyway to avoid the killer. So you might also like to run inner strength because then you can get back a health state and you can also get back your item. So yeah, I would say in, in most cases, only run built to last if you have a toolbox. Calm Spirit. Pros do tip off killers to your location more often than you think. As a killer myself, I use crows a lot. If I see a crow take off, that means a survivor might be in the distance where I can't see them. Let's say you see a crow that's like returning to its position after being disturbed. I know that a survivor was in that area like 15 seconds ago. The issue with this is that you don't need this perk to avoid disturbing crows. You can just crouch past them or you can go around them. There are a lot of perks though that do cause you to scream. So that aspect of this perk can be very useful. It's a really good counter to doctor as well. But other than that, I would say there's more important things to run than this. Camaraderie. The issue I have with it is that it requires you to go into second stage. And there is no guarantee that you're going to be hooked twice. If you can avoid it, you'll probably not want to be hooked at all. And even if this perk does activate, there's no guarantee that you'll need it. It's like, okay, you, you get an extra 34 seconds. That really only helps if the killer is camping you and your allies are looking for an opening to save you. That's really the only time it helps. Okay, chemical trap. Let's see. It only works on a drop pallet. And if you're mid chase, the killer will probably just instantly break the pallet. You won't be able to put a trap on the pallet, basically. That's what I'm saying. That doesn't always happen. You know, a lot of the time the killer does try and mind game the pallet. They try not to break it. If you can out mind game them and force them to, to break the pallet, then you get the, the benefit of chemical trap. There is no guarantee that you'll get to use this in your chases. It's, it is dependent on the killer's behavior. Clairvoyance. You have an idea of where the exit gates are. You have the entire game to figure out where the, the gates are. And if you're a veteran, you already know where the gens are. Unless you're doing sabotage, you don't really care about where the hooks are. Chess, I mean, they can be useful, but possible your teammates already looted them or you already have an item and you don't really need them. 
So the only real important thing that this does for you is to reveal the hatch. That situation doesn't happen that often, so it's not that useful. Corrective action. Basically, if your teammate is bad and they can't hit skill checks, this perk will save them. I don't really think anybody is that bad <laughs> to miss the skill checks because they're really not that hard to hit. And also, it has no benefit for yourself. Purely altruistic, and it involves your teammates making mistakes. I don't like assuming that my team is so bad that they can't hit skill checks, okay? I don't like to assume that. Okay, counter force. Like, look, cleansing totems is great. If you cleanse all the totems, you don't have to worry about no one escapes death, which is really nice. But the aura reveal is the farthest totem away from you. It takes so long to traverse the map. I have to spend like 30 seconds to get there. I just don't. I just wouldn't do this. I wouldn't equip this perk. Cut loose. So basically after performing your first vaults, subsequent vaults are silent, which can make mind games a lot easier for you. Because a lot of killers will rely on sound during their chases to predict where you're moving next. Is it good though? It kind of depends because like not all loops have windows. A lot of them have windows, but sometimes you'll just be looping a killer around a pallet. Sometimes you only need to vault the window once. And sometimes the killer can see you and silencing your vaults doesn't matter. I probably wouldn't use it myself. Dance with me. To really get value out of this, you would probably need something like Lithe that allows you to make enough distance to where three seconds actually saves you. Quick and quiet as well. This would be the ideal Dance with me build here. Dark Sense. I do think this is useful, even if you can see the killer's aura. The killer might be a stealth killer. You won't be able to see their aura because they'll be undetectable, you know? And even if you see the killer's aura, it's possible that they might just pass by that 24 meter radius of you and they won't even know that you're there. You'll see them, they'll just be walking right past you and it won't even matter that you can see their aura because it's, just, it's not important. They don't even know you're there. So it's not really helping much. It's usefulness. It's sort of luck-based, honestly. I've had games where three gens pop at the same time, then I only get to use Dark Sense twice. I probably wouldn't equip it myself. I think there's more important things to do. Dead Hard. Quite a bit harder to activate nowadays. You don't see as many people using it for that reason, because they do have to be unhooked. But it is still very strong. A lot of killers don't expect it now that nobody uses it. At loops, because you know you can take an extra hit, even if you're injured, you can still play the loop as if you're healthy. Well, what do you mean play the loop as if you're healthy? Well, if you're healthy, you can afford to make a mistake. You can afford to mind game the pallet a bit more. You can afford to fake your, your pallet vault or your window vault. Oh, you know, if I get caught here, then I'll just be injured. I won't go down. So I do think it's pretty strong for that reason. Players who like to loop a lot will probably use this. But for a stealth player like me, it doesn't really suit my play style. Okay, deception. It's pretty obvious that you're using this perk if the killer is a veteran. They can also hear your footsteps as well. And your grunts of pain if you're injured. You could pair this with something like light-footed. If you have light-footed and you're healthy, you might be able to convince the killer that you actually hid inside the locker. But like I said, by itself, probably not the best option. Decisive Strike. The reason I don't really like this perk that much is that the stun duration is so so low like it used to be i think four or five seconds and that was actually enough to let you get away but nowadays like and also this perk deactivates whenever you start doing uh basically anything that progresses the game if you really don't like getting tunneled then it's it's an okay perk but the killer isn't always going to tunnel you it's not always guaranteed this is a perk that relies on the killer's behavior in most cases, you won't need this. The killer will not tunnel you, especially with the the anti-face camping mechanic they added recently. I'm not going to say it's a bad perk. It's just, it seems less likely to, to help you than it used to. Deja Vu, it helps you repair the three generators that the killer could use to create a three gen faster. And you can see these generators at all times during the match, which is a pretty nice benefit. It gives you some some situational awareness. If you're a veteran player, you probably will not need this. If you're running a map like the game or something, it could be more useful. But on most other maps like Ormond, you can easily see where all the gens are. 
I would say there's probably more important perks to run than this. Deliverance. Being able to unhook yourself saves your team a lot of time. The only issue is that if you are the first person to get hooked, this becomes useless because you can only unhook yourself on your first hook. Now, that's not that hard to guarantee because there are three other players in the game that the killer could target. I would say the odds of being able to activate this perk are pretty good. Is it worth it? I would say it's worth it, probably. Desperate measures? It's really killer dependent, honestly, because not every killer spreads out the damage to other survivors. Sometimes they just... The killer is really good at chasing down one survivor, like let's say a clown. He's not like a wraith, okay? He's not going to go around doing hit and run. He, he doesn't have much mobility. I would say against killers who are like hit and run, who can spread out the damage like a legion, hag as well. Like hag is pretty good at spreading out the damage. It's, it is killer dependent. That's what I'm going to say. This perk is dependent on the killer you're facing, which makes it luck based, which means I hate it. <laughs> Basically, if it's, if it's a luck based perk, I kind of hate it. It's not that bad though, because in the majority of matches, there's usually like two survivors who are either injured or hooked. So most of the time you're going to get like a 28% bead boost to your healing. Look, there are some situations where if you had 28% faster unhook, that would have been the difference between you getting downed during the unhook animation and being able to unhook your teammate. Okay, there are situations, so it's not useless. Is it worth bringing? If you have a healing build, then yeah. You can stack the bonuses of the healing speed, and this can be pretty good. Detective's Hunch? I would say if you're a veteran, you probably won't find that much use in it because gens and chests, you can remember their locations, even totems as well. This really shines on maps like the game, like Leary's and, and stuff like that, you know, the typical, you know, oh, I can't see very far because there's a bunch of walls in front of me, those types of maps. That's my opinion on that. Distortion. I love distortion. I am a stealth player. When your aura would be shown to the killer, it is simply hidden. And this can happen up to three times before you need to recharge the perk. And recharging the perk is pretty easy. You just stay inside the killer's terror radius, unless the killer is a stealth killer. But even if they are stealthy, there are times where their terror radius will be in effect. And it also hides your scratch marks, so you become super stealthy. It also gives you a lot of information about what the killer's perks are, which helps you play against the killer. This happens in so many matches, like killers love to bring Lethal Pursuer, and Distortion will pop immediately in my match, and I'm like, oh, well he has Lethal Pursuer, but because I have Distortion, I know he's not going to go for me, he's going to go for somebody else so that he can see their aura. So I can sort of play, I can play ballsy, basically. I can head to the middle gen, because I know He's going to go for my teammates and not for me. It seems like, oh, you know, what if the killer, what if the killer doesn't have any aura reading perks? What do I do? Like, it's kind of useless then, right? No, it's not useless. It tells you that the killer doesn't have any aura reading perks, okay? That's a pretty big use in itself. It's very handy. Whether it goes off or not, it's very useful. Diversion. The reason why it's not good when you're throwing the rock, the killer is already doing something else. It's like they're patrolling the gen or they're chasing somebody, they're hooking somebody. If there's no reason for a noise notification to go off, like the killer can tell whether there should be a noise notification or not. Most experienced killers won't fall for this. And in addition, you have to be in the killer's terror radius for 30 seconds to get your pebble. And not every killer has a terror radius. Unlike distortion, you do not start off with a pebble. You have to build this up over time. Let's say the killer's a wraith. You may never get to use diversion. Because Wraith is always invisible, right? So what are you going to do then? Useless perk. Empathetic connection. Sort of like a reverse empathy. It lets other survivors come to you for heals. But the issue with that is that maybe they have Bond. Maybe they have their own aura reading perks. Also, this doesn't benefit you, by the way. This is something for your teammates. If you want something that, that benefits both you and your teammates, then just, just pick Bond. Pick Bond, Empathy, Kindred. Everybody benefits that way, but this really only benefits your team. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's like, you are part of your team. If you're going to be the healer, you need to survive too. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't heal anybody if you're dead, okay? How are you going to heal anybody if you're dead? This perk is basically sacrificing a perk slot to help your team. 
So just be aware of that. Empathy. I do like this perk. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like Bond, except it's a bit more powerful when people are injured. However, the issue is that not everybody's going to be injured. Not every killer is going to be one that injures survivors. They're just going to be, there are some killers that instantly down survivors and they will not get put into the injured state very often. That's why I would say empathy is a worse bond most of the time. Do you really need to know where everybody is beyond 36 meters? I don't think it's really necessary. It's not bad. I would just, I would just say bring bond. It's, it's just better in most situations. Fast track. Basically, this just makes it so you can repair gens a little bit faster if your team is bad. If your team is good and they never get hooked, then this does nothing for you. That's why I don't like this perk. I don't want to assume that my teammates are garbage. I would hope that they're good. If you're playing with friends, I would assume that you're playing with friends that are not baddies. <laughs> okay, let's just cross our fingers that your, your friends are good. And you have to wait until somebody gets hooked for this to activate. It's completely out of your hands. I would not bring this. Fixated, walking faster isn't necessarily that impactful. Unless, of course, you bring something like Sprint Burst. Because Sprint Burst is going to have you walking a lot more than your average survivor. You're going to be managing your exhaustion a lot more. It's a good combination with Vigil as well. A flashbang. Is it worth taking? I would say it's worth taking if you like being in chases and, and such. It's a great incentive for, for players who like to get into chases. It's an incentive for players to do gens because... It requires 50% of a gen to get done to make a flashbang. And then they can get into a chase and they can use a flashbang to potentially get away. But it is harder to get saves with a flashbang than it is with a flashlight. So just be aware of that. Flip flop. I've had games where it's helped me and games where it's just been totally useless. There are a decent number of situations where the killer will leave you on the ground. You can also pair it with power struggle. It's unbreakable as well very niche. There is no guarantee you will get use out of it. Fogwise. It can be good, but this perk depends on you hitting great skill checks. The problem with it is that even if you can see the killer's aura, a lot of the time you don't really need to know where they are because you can see that somebody's getting chased. And if the killer is chasing somebody else and they're not chasing you, which means that even if you see their aura, it's not really helping you that much. The other issue is that the killer can be undetectable as well. If you really want to use it, I'd say Stakeout would be its best companion. It's not horrible, but uh, it has its drawbacks. For the people, it's very good at what it does. If you have limited time to get somebody else off the ground, like let's say the killer is breaking a pallet and your friend is right next to the killer, you can for the people them and they can get up and, and run away. It's nice for those situations, but like how often does that happen? I don't know. However, I think a really nice combo here is Buckle Up. If you get somebody off the ground with Buckle Up and for the people, then you have endurance, even though you're broken. This is also another purely altruistic perk. You are playing the game with only three perks if you bring this. This only helps your team. So yeah, just be aware of that. Friendly competition. Now, 5% equates to... 4.5 seconds of gen time and that lasts for 75 seconds so you're not necessarily even getting 4.5 seconds of gen time from this what's going to happen is it's like okay you completed a gen now you have to run to a different gen which is probably like 10 to 15 seconds away from you so you'll have at most 60 seconds of increased repair speed and that's if you do nothing absolutely nothing else but do the next gen for the next 60 seconds. It doesn't seem like a very attractive proposition to me. You might complete that gen and the killer is right on your tail and you cannot make use of this perk. Or maybe your friend is the one, like the friend that was on the gen with you, maybe they get chased and then they can't use this perk's benefits. So that's why I'm not a big fan of this perk head on. As far as exhaustion perks go, it, it's kind of one of the weaker ones because as you're exiting the locker, it's gonna stun the killer for three seconds but at the same time, it takes you, it takes you like one second to exit a locker. So really it only stuns them for 
two seconds before they can start chasing you again. Now, compared to other exhaustion perks that give you three seconds of 150% movement speed, that is not as powerful. I mean, there are other use cases for it, like you can stun a killer while they're carrying an ally and, and you can save your ally, but those are pretty rare. You can also pull off some, some cheeky mind games, like if you have deception, you can use it with head on, or you can quick and quiet, uh, dance with me or whatever. So, I mean, there, there are other ways you can combine it with other perks to get more value out of it, but probably a different exhaustion perk if I really wanted to play optimally. Hope. In many cases, it, depending on what, what loop it is, this can turn loops into infinites. The issue is that it doesn't work until the game is basically over. You don't really need to, to loop the killer after all the gens are done. You're playing the entire match with three perks just to get a 7% move speed bonus at the end that you probably don't need. That's just my take on it. Hyper focus. I would say by itself, it's not that great, but if you pair it with a toolbox, it can be very strong because toolboxes increase the number of skill checks you receive while repairing a gen. You'll get a bunch more chances to stack up that repair speed bonus. And I would recommend stakeout as well. This is your insurance policy in case you miss one of your skill checks here. Inner focus. Why would I want to see their scratch marks when I can just track their auras, you know, with bond or something? Let's say you're afraid that the killer is going to inflict the blindness status on you. Then you can still find your allies kind of with their scratch marks. But otherwise, I don't really see the point in seeing their scratch marks. When somebody is being chased, like, are you really going to be within 32 meters of that player? Or are you going to be doing gents? You're going to be off doing something productive. You're not going to need to see the killer's aura if they're chasing somebody else. That's usually the case. I probably would just pick Bond or Dark Sense if you want an ally reveal or a killer reveal or something, okay? Inner Strength? It basically gives you a two for one effect. You can cleanse a totem and you also get a health state out of it. It's a very nice way of ensuring that you heal yourself without risking being seen by something like Nurse's Calling or some other aura reading perk. Because, you know, in a locker, your aura is hidden from the killer. If you incorporate inner strength with something like, uh, you know, built to last, that can be nice. You can also, in some cases, if, if the killer's bad or they aren't expecting it, you can combine quick and quiet with inner strength or even like head on as well. Like a super synergy. You hide inside the locker real fast and quick and quiet. They don't hear you. You get healed. They are about to pull you out. You can head on them. And you can also refill your items charges. It's like you get fully reset with this build. Iron Will. They nerfed it too hard. It was very strong back in the day when it offered 100% noise reduction while injured. There's no exhaustion condition here. Now, if you run Iron Will, you basically have to run it without any exhaustion perks, which hampers you during your chase. Is it useless? I mean... If you're a player who doesn't bring exhaustion perks anyways, then it can still be pretty good. 75% is not 100%. The killer can still hear you. It's just a lot harder to hear you. If they're not wearing headphones, they probably won't hear you. But also, if you are crouching, you can reduce your grunts of pain to 100%. Yeah, it's... Mm, it's not as good as it used to be. I hardly ever run this myself anymore. Kindred. Very strong perk for solo queue. I love running this when I'm playing by myself because it just makes the game so much easier. It tells me what I need to do. It tells me, oh, is somebody going for the save? Oh, they are not going for the save? Okay, I'm going to go for it. Oh, they are going for the save? Okay, I can just work on gens. Is the killer camping? Okay, then I don't need to go for the save. I can just work on gens. If you pair this with open-handed... If you're looping the killer near the hook, you basically get wall hacks the entire loop. It makes it super easy to deal with them. Very strong with open handed, but it's also plenty strong by itself. Only issue is that it doesn't do anything if nobody gets hooked. But that is a pretty rare occurrence. I don't worry about that too much. Leader, leader. I think the speed boost is pretty sizable and it does benefit you. Even if it doesn't apply these bonuses to yourself, if your teammates are healing you, 
then you can see that you get healed significantly faster. The two main areas that I think this helps the most is when your team is resetting, when they're all healing themselves, and it helps when they're opening the gates. If I had just opened the gate just a couple seconds earlier, I would have gotten out. That happens so often, I'm telling you. But the rest of this stuff is eh, not super important. It's a decent, decent passive perk, yeah. Okay, left behind. If you're the last survivor in the trial, you can see the hatch. It's kind of rare for you to be the last person. For me, it does happen a bit more because I'm a stealth player and I don't get hooked as much because I'm stealthy. So left behind does sort of work for me sometimes, but I almost never equip it. Light footed. And the footsteps being silent isn't that useful because even if they're silent, if you're injured, then it doesn't do anything. Uh, it's good for flashlight saves. Yeah, I'd agree. It's good for flashlight saves because the killer cannot hear you running to get into position. Yeah, you're not going to be near the killer. You're going to be doing gens. You're going to be traversing the map. It's like the killer can only hear your footsteps when they're within like 10 meters of you. And how often are you within 10 meters? Basically only when you're in a chase. And if you're in a chase, like half of that chase, you're probably going to be injured. Flashlight saves and breakout plays. If you have breakout, then the killer won't hear you following them. But that's only if you're healthy, by the way. I wouldn't bring it. Okay, lightweights. I mean, if you bring fixated, you can tell that your scratch marks are, are harder to track and they do disappear faster. But there are, there are a lot of situations where even if that's the case, the killer still has line of sight on you. Even if your scratch marks fade faster, they still just, they can see you. If you, if you want to run this perk, I would suggest maps like the game or Leary's places where you can make turns, lots of turns and potentially lose the killer. But other than that, I probably wouldn't recommend it just because the killer has other ways to track you other than scratch marks. They can see your aura sometimes. They can make you scream. They can hear your footsteps, blood, friends of pain, lots of ways for them to find you. Okay, Lithe. After performing a rush to vault, you get a speed boost. Now, it just depends on your play style, you know. Every exhaustion perk has its own activation condition. This one happens to be vaulting windows or pallets. It's, it's good. It's good at what it does. You just, you vault something, you get the speed boost. So, it's really just personal preference. Low profile. Now, this is very strong. This effect is very strong. The only way a killer can find you outside of seeing you is if you scream or if they reveal your aura. However, it does require you to be the last survivor standing. This does not mean the last survivor remaining in the trial, just to be clear. Last survivor standing means that everybody else is either downed, hooked, or dead. That's the condition. That can happen sometimes. It's just kind of unlikely. Okay, lucky break. You can pair this with something like Iron Will. You'll basically become, I don't want to say invisible, but you'll become very hard to track. If you turn a corner, the killer is going to have a hard time finding you. But the issue with Lucky Break is that it only lasts 60 seconds. The, the circumstances matter. The map matters. If you're on a map, the Forsaken Boneyard here, it's going to be hard to get away because the lines of sight are very far and wide. But if you have a map like Hawkins Lab, it can be very powerful. Lucky Star. So the idea behind the perk is to give you a little bit of stealth to help you make your way to your teammates so they can heal you, which is useful, but it does require a locker. Okay, made for this. They recently nerfed this, and they nerfed it really hard. It used to be, when you were injured, you got a move speed bonus, but they changed it to deep wounds. And there aren't that many killers that inflict deep wounds on people. Those situations are kind of rare. Uh, having deep wounds, the killer coming to get you while healing on a survivor, kind of uncommon scenarios, in my opinion. Metal of Man. The issue with this is that you have to earn three protection hit 
events. It takes a very active play style. You have to be purposely putting yourself in harm's way to get those protection hits. It's risky for that reason. You take your first protection hit, the killer downs you. You take a second one, the killer downs you. You take your third one and the killer finishes you off. Maybe that's the way it goes. You might not be able to lose the killer, but uh, if you do get to pull it off though, it's very strong, obviously. It gives you an extra hit. It takes a lot of effort to activate the perk, basically. That's why I don't like it. Okay, no mither. No other perk can compare to this one, right? You don't leave pools of blood. Your grunts of pain are reduced by 75%, and you gain recovery speed. And you can completely recover from the dying state. Now that all sounds very nice. The only issue is that you have to play the entire match being broken. Now, is it really that big of a handicap? I would say yes. Being able to be one shot in any video game is scary, okay? <laughs> you cannot make mistakes. And especially against stealth killers. Stealth killers will eat you up. You never know what killer you're going against. So if you pick no mither, you might be at a severe disadvantage. That's why I don't really like it. Even though these benefits are nice, they aren't nice enough to reduce my HP to 50%. Okay, no one left behind. It's a perk that only activates at the very end of the game. And you don't know if your friends are going to be on hook or not. You don't know if they're going to need healing. You don't know if anybody's going to get hooked. And you don't even know if you're going to be the one who unhooks anybody. Like one of your, your friends could unhook the person on the hook. You don't know. It's a big question mark with this perk. So uh, that's kind of why I don't like it. Object of obsession. When your aura is revealed to the killer, the killer's aura becomes revealed to you. And you get a minor bonus to a couple actions. So. And also every 30 seconds, you can see the killer's aura and they can see your aura. Now, is this a good perk? I personally don't think it's a good perk for a very simple reason, which is a lot of killers can become undetectable. And undetectable killers do not reveal their auras to you. So the killer will be able to see you, but you will not be able to see them. It's honestly just like giving the killer an extra perk. It's kind of, it works against you in most cases. Of course, there is the flip side where if the killer is not undetectable, then you can sort of use this perk to increase your, like during, during loops and such, it makes your looping easier. It makes, it makes you the center of attention, basically. If you're a strong looper, you might like that. You might like, oh, you know, I want the killer to chase me and not my allies. So I'm going to reveal myself to the killer. It also sort of nullifies aura reading perks because it allows you to see the killer's aura anytime they would see your aura. There are benefits to this perk. It's just they all don't matter once the killer becomes undetectable. Then it's purely a drawback. That's the biggest thing about object. Off the record, it's kind of like Decisive Strike. It helps you not get tunneled off hook. Is there any reason not to like this perk? Not really. It does what it's supposed to do pretty effectively. It, if you don't like uh, being targeted straight off hook, this could be a nice perk for you. Open handed. This is literally the only scenario I ever use open handed. And that is with Kindred. But it's a very strong combination. 32 meters of wall hacks on the killer. But other than that, you can't you can't even use this perk by itself. It won't do anything for you, really. You have to pair it with an aura reading perk. But those aura reading perks aren't really strong enough to warrant bringing this perk. So yeah, the only perk that's really worth taking this is Kindred. Overcome. What is the issue with Overcome? One-shot killers. That's the issue. They will skip the whole you being injured thing, and this will never activate for you. And when you get unhooked, you're going to be injured, and this won't activate if you get downed. So those are two big scenarios that happen quite often. 
and uh, certain killers will injure you. Like, Plague will injure you with her vomit. Like, you'll become injured, but you might not be in a chase with her because you'll just get infected. Then this perk will activate and it'll just do nothing for you. If there's an M1 killer and they just have a basic attack that injures you, then it's good. But if it's like a killer like Myers, who can one shot you, or Hillbilly, or Leatherface, then it's not so good. Overzealous. After cleansing or blessing a totem, this perk activates. Your generator repair speed is increased by 10%, but it even goes further than that. If you cleanse or bless a hex totem, that bonus is doubled. That'll cut your gen repair speed by like 18 seconds or something. The issue with this is that this perk will deactivate if you lose a health state, which is a pretty common occurrence in this game. Is it good enough to bring into your matches? I would say it's only worth bringing if you have a boon perk because the boon perks, they won't destroy the totems. If you bless the totem, then you still have the possibility that the killer could snuff out your totem and then you can re-bless it and get the benefit back. Parental guidance, stunning a killer by any means. This can mean a pout stun or a head-on stun or even a blast mine stun. So you have, you have to combine it with other perks that give you the opportunity to stun the killer. That's the main thing. Pharmacy. I mean, most of the time I bring a medkit anyways, just because they're so, it's so important to be able to heal yourself. There's so many killers that rely on stealth and these stealth killers, they can one shot you if you're injured. So, I mean, a lot of the time I just bring my own medkit. If you don't bring your own medkit, you could bring this. The issue with this is that you have to find a chest. Finding a chest, you would definitely want to burn a shiny coin because otherwise you only have three chests on the map. So my opinion is that if you want to run pharmacy, burn a shiny coin, and then it's kind of useful. Otherwise, I would rely on other perks to heal yourself. Plot twist. It basically lets you heal yourself whenever you want. It does take the full 30 seconds to recover from the dying state. It's faster than using like self-care because you're downed. And if the killer finds you when you're down, they can just pick you up. It does allow you to escape a couple things. Like, for example, you don't have to worry about nurses calling because you're not technically healing yourself. You're just recovering from the dying state. It also makes you hard to see because you're you're prone on the ground. So you can sort of be stealthy. If you, if you pair it with like tenacity, then it can be, be pretty nice. If the killer has deer stalker, then plot twist is going to work against you, obviously. But I think there's too many important killer perks to waste a perk slot on Deerstalker. Is it worth bringing? I would say it's worth it. It's a pretty fast and stealthy way to heal yourself. Jurors Instinct. It kind of reminds me of Pharmacy, where you do need a shiny coin to get the most use out of it. Is it is it worth it, though? Like, if you go into the, the match without an item, then this can be good, because having an item is... It can, it can change the game for you, okay? Having a med kit can be the difference between life and death. Or having a flashlight could let you save somebody. You just don't know. Poised. After a generator pops, you leave no scratch marks for 10 seconds. The issue with this is that there's no guarantee that you can make use of that. You may not be getting chased at that moment. When the gen pops, your scratch marks may disappear. But the killer is hooking somebody, or they're chasing somebody, or they aren't involved with you. That's often the case. Potential energy, like it says, for each 1.5% of generator repair, you get one token, up to 20 tokens. So you have to repair the gen for longer to transfer less progress to another gen. The main selling point of this is to help you combat bad generator layouts. So you can work on a gen that's on the edge of the map and then transfer that generator's progress to a gen that's closer to the middle, that's higher priority, that's easier for the killer to patrol. Yeah, the three gen. But there are risks associated with this. If you get injured, you lose all of your tokens. Jeez. Also, if you miss a skill check, you lose your tokens. Well, some of them. You could wind up wasting all of your time if you get injured. Power struggle. You can drop nearby pallets, basically, if you're being carried. You do need to wiggle a little bit to get to that point. By itself, it's probably not that good. But if you pair it with flip-flop, 
it can be very effective in some cases. You're just recovering under the pallet, and then if they do anything, anything except pick you up, you should have enough time with flip-flop and, and power struggle here to drop the pallet on them when they pick you up. It's kind of risky running this perk because like, it's a very niche use case, but it's also a very powerful effect it offers you. Premonition. This would be pretty strong if not for its very lengthy cooldown and the fact that you get false positives. It's like you're looking in the direction of the killer, sure, this perk will go off and you'll think, oh no, the killer is coming to get me. He's approaching my gen where I am. So then you go and hide somewhere and then like 10 seconds later, you find out, oh, the killer was just passing by my area. They weren't actually coming to patrol. And then you just wasted, you know, 10 seconds of your time being scared of nothing. Um, another issue is that it makes it so you cannot be as aware of your surroundings. To not get those false positives, you have to look away from where the killer would be approaching from. And that is not ideal. So yeah, that's why I don't like it. Okay, prove thyself. There is a penalty applied to all survivors who work on the same gen. This perk, it doesn't completely nullify that penalty, but it does reduce it. Is it worth it? I mean, I don't know, because there's a lot of situations where your teammates will be working on their own gens and you'll be working on your own gen. Most of the time during the match, one player is on hook, one player is being chased, one player is saving the hook person or healing them, and then there's you who's doing the gen. There's nobody else with you on that gen. I don't use it. Quick and quiet. Quick and quiet. Quick and quiet can give you an edge when it comes to mind games because killers love to rely on those noise notifications to find you. You can also enter a locker, basically disappear during a chase. And, you know, most killers will eventually realize that you're inside the locker. But if you pair this with like head on or something, you can just stun them. By itself, it's okay. When you pair it with other perks, it's even better. Quick Gambit. Let's let's be real here. You are not going to kite the killer within 24 meters of a generator for the entire 90 seconds it takes to complete a gen. But this, this speed boost, if that were the case, it would knock off less than nine seconds of repair time. Pretty underwhelming. Like, why would your teammate risk staying on the gen when the killer is so close? It's not only risky, but it doesn't even do that much, okay? Reactive healing. How often does this happen where you are injured and then a survivor within 32 meters becomes injured? Does that happen a lot? It happens sometimes. And when it does happen, the benefit of this perk is it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. You get 50% of your, your heal time cut off. If the killer has Sloppy Butcher, and that's a pretty common perk, by the way, it's one of the most used killer perks, all that healing progress is going to go to waste. And not just Sloppy Butcher either, there are also add-ons that cause hemorrhage. If you're going to run this, I would run it on a map where the map is kind of small and you're more likely to be within 32 meters of everybody. Reassurance. It can definitely help your team if they're being camped. The issue is that this perk does nothing to help your own survival. If the killer is doing nothing but camping, then you're buying your whole team 30 seconds to do gens. However, if the killer is not camping, which let's say most of the time the killer is not camping, they don't really want to camp, then it's kind of useless. We're talking about perks that are worth taking into our matches here. We want perks that are pretty much always useful in some capacity. So I'm not going to say I don't like it, but it's the reason why I don't bring it into my matches very often. Yeah, that, that too. They added anti-camping recently. You can unhook yourself with the killer face camps you. So there's even less reason to bring reassurance now. Red herring. It reminds me a lot of diversion, where even if you make a noise notification, the killer may just ignore it. The issue with these like these decoy type perks is that the killer often has their own detection abilities that they're relying on. 
For example, they may have horror field perks, or they may have like a surveillance, or they may have discordance or something, like Doctor's Static Blast that helps them find survivors. The killer has to be a killer that has no detection abilities, no leads on any survivor locations, no add-ons that help reveal survivor locations, no perks. It's just very unlikely to do anything for you, is what I'm trying to get across, okay? Repress Alliance. The main reason to use Repress Alliance is to prevent the killer from damaging the gen and regressing it. This is probably the biggest counter you have to a perk like Pop Goes the Weasel. It can kind of counter Hex Ruin, but nobody uses Ruin anymore because it kind of sucks. Maybe it's not even worth using against Pain Resonance because Pain Resonance only takes off like 15% of the gen. For the killer, it's like a minor inconvenience. Not really worth it in my opinion. Resilience. I think a lot of people use this perk because it doesn't only help with repairing gens or healing speed or unlocking gates, but it also lets you vault faster in chases. I mean, 9% faster vault speed, it may not seem like much, but I mean, there are cases where that could probably save your life, okay? I think that's the biggest reason why people take it. The, the fast vaults, that's right. They love the fast vaults. I would say it's worth bringing if you like to live on the edge, yeah. Resurgence. 50% healing progress will get you back in the game faster, that's for sure. Sloppy counter, is it? Yeah, that's what I would say, yeah. And also, this, this only can occur twice in the match, and there's no guarantee you'll even be hooked twice. You could just equip the second wind. I think this might be a better option for, uh, for recovering after you get uh, unhooked. Okay, Rookie Spirit. Let's just say you're paying attention, and then you see this perk go off, you see a gen turn white. You'll know the killer just kicked that gen that you're looking at. But other than that, it doesn't really tell you much else about what the killer is doing. It kind of helps you manage your, your generators a little bit. It's like, oh, you know, that gen's regressing, I should probably go and touch it. But I wouldn't say it's that useful for people who have experience in the game. A saboteur. There's usually better things to be doing than waiting around at hooks. There's so many hooks on the map. Even if you sabotage one, there's another one just a short walk away. You might have just wasted all your time. You spent all this time getting to position to sabotage a hook and the killer just ignores it. Probably not worth taking unless you really dedicate your entire build to it. Scavenger. It sounds strong and it kind of is, but there are a couple things. Your toolbox needs to be completely drained, totally empty of charges. Secondly, you need to hit five great skill checks, and skill checks are completely random. So it is a luck-based perk. I have gone games where I have run this perk, and I didn't get like any skill checks. By the time I got my five tokens, the game was over. I hate RNG, why I don't like these skill check base perks, okay? If you want your, your item back, you get built to last. Scene partner. I think the real issue is that sometimes you'll look at the killer, even when you don't really need this perk, you'll activate it. It's kind of like a premonition problem where you activate it when you don't really want to. Ideally, you would want to activate this perk when you're looping the killer. So you have an edge during the chase, but Oftentimes, you will activate this before the, the looping even happens. And that kind of sucks. So, I don't like it for that reason. I don't like it because it's uh, activating it is just too easy. Second Wind. To get the benefit, you have to heal an injured survivor to healthy. It's kind of a, kind of a challenge to do that. Because um, you have to fully heal an injured survivor, if any other teammate contributes to another survivor healing, then you have to heal another survivor. It's not that hard of a condition to meet, but it's kind of annoying to have to deal with the way it, it works. It's strong enough to be worth bringing, but just be prepared to have to heal more than one survivor. Self-care, you can heal yourself just really slowly. It takes almost three times as long 
to heal yourself as opposed to letting somebody else heal you. And during that time, it's very possible for the killer to run into you and finish you off. It also makes you very vulnerable to aura reading perks like nurses calling. Uh, it's also really painful to heal yourself with this perk when there's like hemorrhage or there's mangled or something on you. Then it takes like a, a full minute to finish healing yourself. It's awful. I would say if you if you like being able to heal yourself, then you should pair this with botany knowledge. It makes it a little bit more bearable. Self-preservation. It's kind of similar to reactive healing, except the radius to trigger this is even smaller, 16 meters, as opposed to 32. So it's even harder to activate. Let's say they do down your ally and then they start chasing you. It's like, well, you still already have a head start. So why do you need all this stuff? You, you probably don't. Slippery meat, wink, wink. This is the prime example of a perk that I hate, <laughs> okay? You have tiny, a little bit higher chance of unhooking yourself. Whenever I run this perk, one of my teammates is nearby and they're unhooking me, so it's kind of useless. It just, it, I hate the luck-based perks, okay? Just equip Deliverance if you want to unhook yourself, okay? Don't rely on this RNG garbage. Small game. I think when you have more experience in the game, Perks like this don't help that much because you already have an idea of where all the totems and all the gens are. I think it's a, a nice perk on certain maps like Leary's kind of looks the same no matter where you go. All the walls and the, the layout looks the same. There aren't really any. It's like anywhere you go on that map, it's like every hallway looks pretty similar to the other. I would say be fine totems. Detective's Hunch is better. Or a map, just, just if you don't like totems, bring a map, right? Okay, smash hit. Stunning the killer with a pallet isn't the hardest thing in the world, but it is pretty risky. If you really wanted to, you could always sacrifice a health state to get a stun with a pallet. You just stand on the opposite side of the pallet, wait for the killer to swing at you, then you can stun them and get a massive speed boost from this perk. Of course, you are trading your health state for that, which is not ideal. You, if you can stun the killer consistently during your chases, like if you're good at that, you have like solid reaction time, then yeah, this is better than your average exhaustion perk. Because you do get that four seconds of, of speed as opposed to the usual three from things like Sprint Burst or, or Lithe. It does go well with parental guidance. Pretty easy to lose them at that point. Soul Survivor. It doesn't do anything unless your team is dead. You do not want to be in a situation where your entire team is dead. You ideally want to win before that happens, so you want to equip perks that prevent you or your teammates from dying. That is the easiest way to win. Soul Survivor is a hard way to win, okay? It's, it's saying, okay, I don't believe in my team enough to help me win the game. I don't think they're going to like that. Solidarity. The problem is that they'll try and heal you first sometimes, and you also have to be injured. I think against killers who injure the whole team, like Legion, it could be a nice time saver. Other than that, probably not the strongest perk. Okay, Soul Guard. While cursed by a hex, you can fully recover from the dying state. And that is completely luck-based, by the way. You never know when the killer will bring a hex. And also, people can cleanse hexes as well. This has happened to me before, actually. You get downed, you're recovering, and then your teammate cleanses the hex before you finish recovering. That's always fun, right? It's reliant on the killer's behavior. It's reliant on RNG. That's why I don't like it. It's like, did the killer bring a hex? If yes, you get a nice benefit. If no, then all you get is endurance. Okay, my former favorite perk, Spine Chill, which they murdered. They have done atrocious things to this perk. This perk will light up anytime the killer has line of sight of you. That doesn't seem very useful to me, because if the killer has line of sight on you, you have line of sight on them. So what is this perk really telling you? It's not telling you much that you don't already know, 
even if the killer is a stealth killer, you're going to be able to find them if there's line of sight. It can sort of help, like let's say it's a spirit or something and she's invisible when she's phasing and then spine chill lights up. You might have a second or two before she reaches your location. How useful is that? I don't think it's that great. There's a wall in front of you, then the perk will not light up if there's a wall. That's the main issue. It doesn't tell you anything that you don't already know in 90% of cases. It's like a minor counter, minor counter to invisible killers. If the invisible killer is behind a wall, it doesn't do anything. I will say it's garbage forever, the rest of my life, until they change it. I hate BHVR for killing my cat. Sprint Burst. Three seconds of being faster than a killer is almost guaranteed to get you to whatever loop you're looking at. Players with Sprint Burst, they basically are immune to surprise attacks. In most cases, if it's a stealth killer and they, they sneak up on you, you have Sprint Burst, you just run to the nearest pallet. They have to run the loop like a, a powerless killer. They lost their element of surprise against you. They can't get their free hit. They have to be looped. Strong against stealth killers, strong against slow killers, not so strong against fast killers like Blight or Nurse. Uh, Hillbilly, it can be okay against him because it takes a while to rev up the chainsaw, but it's pretty annoying to deal with. Stakeout, it shaves off some time from your pairs, but what you really want to do is pair it with Hyper Focus. You want to pair it with uh, Fogwise as well. By itself, it's okay, but with these two, it's even better. Okay, Streetwise, Streetwise. Literally only one scenario where I bring Streetwise, and that is with this item. That's it. You and you it. also extend this benefit to your teammates as well. You can also bring it with a medkit too. If you if you want like a medkit that lasts a really long time, then you can uh, a gauze roll and whatever the red add-on is. I don't have it, but... I wouldn't recommend bringing it with the flashlight. As flashlights, they last long enough by themselves with, with the batteries and stuff. They're they're probably just fine without uh, streetwise. Uh, toolboxes or medkits. That's usually what you want to. Collective stealth. I think if you're in a in a group with friends, it might be better. You can sort of coordinate, like, oh, you know, let's let's head over here and, and stick together because you can communicate and stuff. When you're in solo queue, I think these teamwork type perks they aren't as good. Similar to blood pact, yeah. That's my thought. Yeah, this is another teamwork perk. Use this perk with a friend if you want to get benefit out of it. Solo queue, you cannot rely on the randoms to stay with you. And also, I mean, like, most of benefit, it's like, do you really want two players to just stay near each other during a chase? The person getting chased is not wasting time, but the one sticking around, giving his friend that little extra boost of speed, that guy is wasting time. He should be doing gems. Technician, if you're not good at skill checks, it's really good, I guess. The, the issue is that when you miss a skill check, it punishes you even more than it usually would. Additional 3% progress is lost. Yeah, like you said, it's a noob perk. It's for noobs. Are you guys noobs? Because I'm not. <laughs> I don't use this perk. This little tiny benefit of reducing the noises of repairs, kind of worthless because... The generator makes noise separate from your repairs that, that tells the killer how close it is to being done. It really is kind of worthless, okay? This little icon is like, oh yeah, be quiet, be quiet, don't make any noise on your generator repairs. It's still making noise, dude. It's still making noise. You're lying. This icon is a lie. It still makes noise. Garbage. Tenacity. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool when it actually works for you when the killer leaves you on the ground, which doesn't happen that often, but when it does happen, this perk can let you get away. It pairs very well with stuff like Unbreakable. Flip Flop and Power Struggle. Oh, even Plot Twist, you can put Plot Twist in there. There's a lot of perks that synergize with uh, Tenacity here. I like Tenacity. It's just the fact that being left on the ground, being slugged is kind of a rare thing. So I would rather pick perks that don't put me in that situation. Okay, this is not happening. The only reason I would ever really run this is if I'm running a hyper-focus build. Okay, troubleshooter. Is this good? 
in certain situations, it can be good. What scenarios are those? It's when the structure you are looping the killer at has high walls that they cannot see through. The short wall and long wall loop with the pallet in between those two walls, perfect place to use troubleshooter because you'll drop the pallet and then the killer will think, oh, you know, I can still just chase him around the, the walls and eventually get him. Troubleshooter will let you see the killer through the tall walls and that will give you an advantage for those six seconds of uh, aura reveal. You want to loop them at the places where they do not have line of sight on you. Unbreakable. It's more like a, an insurance perk. A lot of killers do slug survivors. This, this happens a lot, actually. The killer will slug everybody to put pressure on a survivor team. Three people will be slugs, and then he's chasing the final guy. And then one of the survivors has Unbreakable, and then he revives everybody else. That survivor turns the game around for the whole team. Up the ante. Now, luck, you can already tell. If luck is in the description of the perk, I already hate it. <laughs> I already hate it. Anything luck-based, anything RNG, anything gotcha, I hate it. Okay? Which is kind of funny because I am playing a gotcha game right now. But whatever. I I like the gameplay in that, that game, so whatever. But look, the issue is that the only thing luck does is influence your chances of unhooking yourself. That's all it does. Uh, screw that. I hate gotchas. I hate RNG. I hate luck. That's why I hate up the ante. Urban evasion. It would be so nice to have increased movement speed while crouching. It would be convenient in, in certain scenarios, but it just doesn't do enough. There aren't enough situations where increasing your movement speed while crouching is appealing to me. There are a couple killers you can sort of counter. Hag, for one, crouch over her traps without triggering them. You can counter Skull Merchant a little bit when her, her drones have those invisible scanning lines. You can crouch under them. Maybe maybe Huntress, if you crouch under like small walls, you can avoid a hatchet, maybe, but it's just not enough. It's not enough. When you're getting chased, you want to be running. You don't want to be crouching. Vigil. Okay, I think the biggest one here to pay attention to, aside from Exhausted, the exposed status wears off 30% faster, which is really cool. Because there are some killer perks that are like time-limited exposure. This perk can save you from getting one shot. But the main reason to bring Vigil is the increased exhaustion recovery. And you always, in my opinion, you always run Vigil with Sprint Burst, okay? Okay, Visionary, you can see Generator Auras within 32 meters. Is that good? Not really. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really that good. Because if you have experience in this game, you kind of already know where all the gens spawn. The only situations where it's kind of okay is like maps like the game, Hawkins Lab, those maps where it's, it's hard to find the gens, basically. Other than that, you can probably live without it. Wake up. Is 25% gate opening speed worth it? I mean, I probably wouldn't sacrifice a perk slot for this. It's... It's, it's like, it's so, there's so little, it, it doesn't do anything really. It's like, it has one use. You open the gate faster and then it's over. If another teammate opens the gate, there's like three other people who could be opening the gate. Those gates are already open and this perk does nothing for you. So yeah, I would say no, it's not worth it. We'll make it. I do find this perk to be useful when I use it. I like it because it gives you the healing at the moment that you need it. And it also persists for a while after you unhook people. So you can use it to heal other survivors even after the unhook. Uh, the issue is that you need to be the one doing the unhooking. And during the match, you are not always going to be the survivor in the best position to unhook your allies. There may be another teammate who's closer to the hooked ally. And in that case, this perk doesn't really do anything for you. If you're going to run this, you need to dedicate your playstyle to being altruistic. You need to be staying near those hooks. And the, the issue with that, though, is that you could be working on gens instead of dedicating your time to unhooking people. And if another teammate has the same idea as you, where they're like, oh, you know, I want to be the savior. I want to be altruistic. I want to, I want to play this way. I don't want to work on gens. That's boring. I feel like if you're going to use this playing with friends and being like, 
I'm going to be the one who does the unhooking, then that would work better. Okay, we're going to live forever. The main benefits are faster healing speed to dying state survivors and endurance after you do any of these altruistic actions. Is that worth it? Both benefits are if somebody is in a dying state, both benefits. It does, just for that reason, it does seem pretty niche. But, mm, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's not really that. No, no. <laughs> uh, Windows Opportunity. You're going to see a lot of people use this for good reason, because it tells you where to go next after you either drop a pallet or you're just moving to another tile when you're being chased. You don't run the risk of running into any dead zones when you're being chased. It's not as useful if you are more experienced with the game because you already know where most of the pallets and windows spawn. However, it can still be good, even if you're a veteran, because sometimes those pallets have been used by your teammates. Yeah, I would say even for veterans, it's, it's pretty good. And then we have wiretap. I do find this to be pretty useful in certain, certain areas. For example, if you wiretap the generator at the shack, it is so easy to loop the killer because you have wall hacks. You could use it on indoor maps where there's lots of short lines of sight and, and tall walls where you can see the killer through the walls and they can't see you. So it benefits your whole team. Now the issue is that they can kick the gen to disable this perk. To counter that, you of course have blast mine here. You can prevent the killer from immediately disabling this perk and stun them. I would say even by itself, it can be pretty good. Okay, and now we have appraisal. I would say by itself, it's okay. You might be able to find like a med kit. Yeah, I say like when you're when you're searching for, through a chest, you're probably looking for a med kit most of the time. <laughs> you really want to bring like a shiny coin or something. I mean, you could just not equip this and just bring an item instead. Just like, you know, you can only have one item at a time anyway. So just, just bring an item, equip a different perk. It's not really that necessary. Dramaturgy. What I hate about this perk, and it, this is a very common theme, there's RNG. RNG attached to this exhaustion perk. You could scream when you activate this, or you could gain a random item. But what's the, the most awful thing about it is that you could become exposed. Not very fun. Residual manifest. What it does is if the killer has blindness, they can't see auras, right? They can't see generator auras. It's not that useful, honestly, because like they've probably already memorized where all the gens are, so it's not that big a deal. Maybe they can see auras through walls with one of their perks or an add-on or something. It's possible that it could help you, but you'll never know that until the match is over. And, you know, a guaranteed flashlight, it's like, if you're running this perk, then why don't you already have a flashlight equipped, you know? It's like, to bring that perk, just have a flashlight with you. Kind of seems redundant. So I'll see you guys next time. I hope you have a great rest of your night. Thanks for watching.